what's going on guys welcome back to collecting 101 now in today's episode we're going to talk about venetian glass or some might call it Murano glass. Now, for the sake of this episode, we're going to just call it Murano glass. Because, I mean, Venetian glass is the original name of it because it was made in Venice. But Murano glass is the more common term everybody knows it by. So, today we're going to talk about the history of Murano glass, which is very extensive. As well as the popularity of Murano glass. So, you're going to look at popular techniques and popular types of Murano glass that you're going to want to be out there looking for. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the value in today's market of Murano glass. So let's get started today with history. The origins of molded glass making in Venice can be traced all the way back to the 8th century, when it was used to illuminate bathhouses. Now, by the late 1200s, production of the finest quality glass objects was Venice's major industry. Now, because of that, laws were actually put into place to protect and safeguard their secrets and techniques, as well as to ensure the profitability of this industry in Venice. Now, with some of these laws, I, I had to tell you guys, because there are some crazy ones out there. Now, in 1271, there was a law that prohibited importing foreign glass, as well as employing foreign glass makers. In 1291, there was a law that required all furnaces be moved from Venice to Murano to isolate all the, or the, all the glass craftsmen into one area to hold on to their secrets so they couldn't spread them around the country. Now, in 1295, there was actually a law that prohibited any glassmaker to leave the city. Now, those are crazy to me. I mean, if you were able to be a technician or an artist of this amazing glass, you did not get to leave the city at one point. It was literally held into and put a bubble around you so you couldn't go anywhere. That is just crazy. Think about that nowadays. You're so good at something that you do that you can't share it with the world. You're stuck in one area and you can't do anything about it because there's a law that prohibits it. I mean, they were treated well, which we'll discuss here in a little bit, but man, that just blew my mind to think that you are so good at something that they wouldn't let let you leave so yeah absolutely crazy now like i mentioned earlier glass makers had privileged social status now they were pretty much treated like royalty now even their daughters were allowed to marry into the most wealthiest and powerful families which was a rarity back then now in the 15th century master uh, Angelo Baravir, sorry, I had to get the name right there. He discovered the process for producing clear glass that allowed for Murano glassmakers to become the only producer of mirrors in Europe. Now, starting in the 17th century, Murano glass began its decline. So as Venetian power grip on the trade route and the imports of major city of commerce began to vanish, as its monopoly of power on glassmakers started to fizzle because people from around the country were starting to produce glass. Now, by the 18th century, it continued its decline as a worsening political climate, as well as increased competitions from makers in Bohemia and France were emerging. Now, Napoleon's conquest of Venice in 1797 drastically shrunk the industry as it was pretty much, he abolished all the glassmakers. I mean, it was a huge deal. They pretty much destroyed a whole industry because of, you know, political climate. I mean, it's just... It was a terrible thing. Now, things couldn't get worse. 1814's transfer of Venice from France to the Habsburg Empire was really the final nail in the coffin to that industry because um, they preferred their native glassmaking from Bohemia than to the Murano style from Venice. Now, the industry didn't die out, though, because the original artisans wanted to keep it going. They really were all about the personal dedication to their craft, as well as to live up to the expectations that their fathers and grandfathers put out there. They didn't want it to go away. They wanted their name to live on. So they continued to produce the glass. And it actually broke through in 1854 when Six Toso Brothers opened. Now, Fratelli Toso brought back all the forgotten glass making techniques. He wanted to bring it all back because he loved the glass and he thought it would be a great industry. So they actually opened a factory back up in Venice solely dedicated to producing Murano glass. Now, by the early 1900s, Murano Glass looked into a lot of different styles of glass that were out there, and they wanted to change with the times as well. So instead of the original Murano Glass they were doing, they looked into a more of an Art Nouveau style of glass. Now, as they found out, it was a huge success. So they always wanted to stay on top of the latest trends going on and the latest home decor. So by the 1930s, they even experimented into different animals they did as well. So that's where you see in the Murano geese or ducks 
or dogs or whatever you wanted to look for out there, Murano wanted to be on top of it. Now, when World War II hit, the industry took a big hit, along with many other industries that took huge hits during World War II. And like we've discussed in past Collecting 101 videos, there's a lot of industries that were hurt during World War II. But the one thing about Murano Glass that was big is once the war ended, it boomed right back up to exactly what it was before. It really came back with a huge boom because the quality you were getting from Murano was unmatched by anybody else. That's why they're really one of the, they were always on top of the industry in glass making. And it always made them one of the best glass makers out there. So when you were looking for quality, Murano always came through. Now, if you're looking to the nowadays times, obviously there's stuff that has made newer Murano glass still gets made today because the stuff is so popular. It's beautiful. As you guys can see in all these pictures I've been posting so far, the glass is just immaculate. It is some of my favorite glass out there. Now, guys, that's really the history I'm going to run down today on Murano glass, but there's so much more. I mean, if we're looking all the way back to the 8th century, I mean, there's tons of history that I couldn't get to, but... Like I said, hopefully this gives you a little nugget and wants to get you into what Murano Glass was and get you guys to do a little bit of research on your own because I'm telling you, Murano Glass is something that will never go away. It is, it is that high quality of item that it won't go away. So, all right, guys, let's get on to popular techniques, styles, and types of Murano Glass. Be ready for a lot of pictures. All right, so let's get into the popularity of Murano glass. Now this will easily be my favorite part of the video because I can show off so many more of these beautiful pieces of glass. Now we're gonna discuss in no particular order different or popular types, styles, and techniques of Murano glass. So like I said, no particular order and try to give me a little bit of a break on some of these pronunciations of these, some of these techniques because they're a little tough, but I'll do my best and hopefully this gives you a little bit of an inkling to get in and do a little bit of research on your own because I'm telling you guys, you will not go wrong looking up some of these glasses because these are just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's start it off with acidato, which is the use of fluorohydric acid to etch glass. Again, Beautiful pieces, can't go wrong with this kind of stuff. The next one we're going to show you is the Alessandrite, which is the use of neodymium oxide put into molten glass that allows the color to change in different lights. Again, beautiful stuff. And I was going to do a little bit of research on my own to see how close it is to that, that Vaseline glass, how you get that different glow off of Vaseline glass compared to this. Again, not too sure on it, but again, very cool because they're both it likes, you know, when you shine different lights on it, you get different colors. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the next one we're going to show you is the Cristallo di Murano, which is referring to the transparent glass. So just your clear glass, as you guys can see, still beautiful, still high quality items, but just a different style. Uh, the next one we're going to show you is the Double. Um, is my guess what that is pronounced. It's a technique including um, putting gold and silver decorations inside the glass. Very cool. Again, I, I, I probably used to say the same thing on every one of these because these are all just very beautiful pieces of glass. But at least, you know, kind of give you guys a different rundown of all these different styles that are out there. The next one we're going to show you is the Fenicio, which is the use of white glass around an object. Then it's engraved in a wavy pattern. So to give it a different look, again, in other, in other, you know, style of glass, it's just very beautiful. The next one we're going to show you is the Foglio Dioro, which is use of golden leaf inside the glass. I think it's 24 karat golden leaf, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, again, high-end glass, high-end stuff, very cool. The next one we're going to show you is the Foglio di Argento, which is silver leaf used inside a glass. Again, you can't go wrong, guys. This stuff is just gorgeous pieces of glass. I mean, if you come across it, we have some in the store, you, will, you won't go wrong. It's great in any collection. The next one we're going to show you is the Fumato, which is the technique used to give impressions of smoke trapped in the glass. Probably close to my favorite. This one's a really cool. You know, give you that illusion of something that's not there. Definitely my kind of thing. I really like this glass. The next one we're going to show you is the marina, which is glass rods arranged so the cross section displays a certain design inside of the glass. I mean, come on. The ideas these guys came up with just to show off their art is just so cool to me. Uh, just, again, you know, a very cool piece. The next one we're going to show you is the Sabiature, which is the use of an air compressor sand or aluminum powder to spray on the glass to cause a micro fracture. 
I mean, come on. I, I it's such a cool industry to be in. In my opinion, like to be able to use all your creative juices to create all these different kinds of glasses is just it's so cool. And I see why there was laws and secrets and don't tell anybody about it because they were doing all these amazing things to create these one of a kind pieces. All right, so the next one we're gonna show you is a couple types of glass. You got the beadware Murano glass, which again, very cool pieces of glass. And then we're gonna show you some of the engraving glass that Murano did. Again, like I said, man, this is, you come across Murano, you guys better pick it up because this stuff is always gonna be good sellers. Now let's get into some of these really cool animals. I wanna show you guys a couple of these too because we do have a couple in the shop. We actually just sold the Murano goose in the shop, but these are just gorgeous. I mean, if you're collecting animals or glass, there's no better way to go than with Murano. I mean, these things are so cool. Now the next one we're gonna show you, probably a little risque, uh, this is the Naked Ladies. A lot of Naked Ladies from Murano. So these are just different styles that they went through as well. Very cool pieces, great for house decor, always something cool, just a cool little fun fact. Anytime I come across naked lady sculptures or men and ladies like kissing in sculptures, I always buy them for my brother. Kind of a little inside joke that we have that, you know, if I ever come across them, I always send them to every birthday or just randomly, I'll be sending him, you know, random sculptures of naked women and men <laughs> that are kissing and stuff. Something fun I like to do when I'm at auctions. So always keep my eye out for stuff like that. And then the last thing we're going to do with this whole thing, guys, is I just want to show more glass. That's all I want to do. I just, I love this stuff so much that I think the more I can show you guys, the better. So here's just a bunch more glass that's out there from Murano. There's so many different cool pieces. You know, if there's a style or a technique that you fall in love with, there's so many great pieces out there. Like we talked about in the history section, you're going all the way back to the 8th century. You're not going to have a problem finding some of these you know, unique pieces, or you'll have a problem finding the unique pieces, but you won't have a problem adding unique pieces to your collection. So you have, a, you know, a one of a kind piece or just in general, you know, all the options that are out there to put in your collection. But yeah, guys, that's just a small sliver of the popularity of you guys. There's so many popular styles, more styles, more techniques out there that if you guys really are interested in this stuff, I highly recommend doing research and getting out there and checking out some of this because there is some really cool pieces out there. So, all right, guys, let's get into the value in today's market for Murano glass. All right, so let's talk about the value of your Murano glass. Now, you guys know me. I always like to start off with condition. And with glass, pottery, it's all the same. You want no chips, no cracks, no repairs. You want a flawless piece because that's going to retain the most amount of value. Now, if it does have a chip or something in it, don't just throw it away. There are people that will buy it, but it drastically affects the value. So make sure you're keeping and taking care of your Murano glass. Now, you might be thinking, how do I know if I have a piece of Murano glass? It's tough. Right now, it's tough because 40% of the market is made up of counterfeit Murano pieces. That is a huge chunk of the market. So you really have to look into a specialist, especially everything pre-1980. I'd recommend going through a specialist. Now, I have a specialist I would recommend to you guys. It's appraiseitnow.com. I've used them. They appraise stuff for me all the time. All you got to do is send in a picture, a small description. It's $25. You get everything back within 48 hours. It comes right back through your email. I've used them. I've insured my stuff through them. Like I said, guys, I highly recommend going through them. They have appraisers all over the world that are experts in these areas of field, or these fields. So I'm telling you, I wouldn't just you know, take a guess, go to an expert, have them take a look at it. They'll let you know exactly what you have. They'll give you a value on it, an insurance value on it, and even a longer description than you probably even knew about. So keep in mind, go to appraiseitnow.com, and I'm telling you, use the link in our description, and you guys will get a great deal on a great item and a great service. Now, if you guys have Murano glass that's post-1980, most of not most of them, all of them should come with a certificate of authenticity. So if you're buying a piece, most of the time, a high-end piece like that, people will hold on to the paperwork. So make sure you you know check and see if they have their certificate because if they do, I mean, that makes it a lot easier to identify your piece of Murano glass. All right, so let's dig into the value, actual value, money of Murano glass. Now, most pieces, if you want to start a collection, you guys really can. A lot of the small pieces can get for five to 10 bucks, 15 bucks, depending on what you're looking for. But again, those are the smaller pieces of Murano glass. 
but you got to start somewhere. If you want to start a collection, why not just start small, see if you like it. And there's a lot of very affordable pieces of Murano glass out there. Now, most pieces that you're going to run across, not the small stuff, but most of the medium to large stuff, you're looking at $10 all the way into the hundreds. I mean, there are literally some really beautiful pieces of Murano out there. They're going to cost you more money, but I'm telling you, you won't go wrong with this high quality of a product because I don't see the values going down on these because this kind of stuff is always good home decor from their vases to the animals to all that stuff always fits into different kinds of home decor. Now, if you're looking for some of the rare pieces or larger pieces, guys, I'm telling you, this stuff gets into the thousands, even running up on tens of thousands of dollars. So, I mean, don't think this is going anywhere. This stuff is good quality, high value, and I think it's going to retain its value too, and I don't see it going down. So, if you're going to get in to start collecting this, you want to start small, or if you want to start really big and take a big plunge in, but if not, you start small and you guys can really accumulate a great collection of Murano glass. All right, guys, you know me. This is my favorite part of the video. Top three most expensive pieces of Murano glass that have sold on eBay lately. So let's start off with number three. We got a Vanini Toots Zaninsky 1984 vase that sold for over $3,500. And then the next one on our list is an Oscar Zanini Half Moon Sculpture that sold for over $4,400. Like I told you guys, man, this stuff is high-end stuff, high prices. And the number one highest-selling Murano glass on eBay is Olivio Seguro uh, sculpt, or Italian Sculpture signed that sold for over $8,500. Wow, that is huge money for pieces of glass, guys. I mean, that's crazy. But this is a huge market. Murano glass, as you guys can see here, there's definitely a lot of affordable pieces out there you can buy, but there are some high-end pieces too that can fetch you a lot of money. So if you're going to start a collection, Murano glass is nothing you're going to shake a fist at. It's just like Fenton. It's going to hold its value. I don't see it going anywhere. I don't see the values dropping down. They might stay flat for a while, but it's going to go up. This stuff is good stuff. And, you know, when you get quality like this, I don't think I don't see it ever going down to nothing. So definitely something I'd get into. But all right, guys, that's our recap. Our, that's, our, that's our video today for Murano glass. I mean, the history goes all the way back to the 8th century. Really cool stuff to get into. Popularity, easily my favorite part of the video. All those beautiful pieces of glass. I really hope you guys got a good understanding of what what's out there. And hopefully it maybe intrigues you to get into it. And then, of course, the value. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're going to get into collecting Murano glass, this is it won't go wrong with the value on it. The value is up there. If you can get good pieces for cheap, and if you start learning a little more about it, I mean, it's all about that research. I always talk about it in these videos. You learn more about it, you might be able to find those diamonds in the rough that people just don't know that it's a Murano glass. And you might be able to get an $80 piece for $10 or a $1,000 piece for maybe $70. You just never know. That's the fun part about our business is the, the hunt. The treasure hunt. That's what gets me up every morning to go out and do this job is because you just never know what you're going to find. And with Murano Glass, I definitely think there's a, a chance you could get out there and buy some of these pieces for cheap, you know, that people might not know they, you know, know what they have. So, so yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. If you guys want to throw a like in there, and of course, comment below, guys. Do you did I miss anything on Murano Glass, or do you want to add anything that I did miss? Throw it in the comment section, guys. It's a big community here. Let's work together. So the more knowledge we have. Apologize for the clock, <laughs> but the more knowledge we have on this, guys, the better it is for everybody, especially people getting into collecting Murano glass. So definitely uh, throw it in the comment section what you guys think about Murano glass. I already know there's going to be a lot of beautifuls in there because this is that's what this glass is. Um, and of course, if you guys get some time, you like the content, throw in, hit that subscribe button real hard. I'm telling you guys, we got collecting 101 videos coming out all the time and a bunch of different series of videos we do on here, highlighting antiques, vintage items, thrifting, you know, auctions, all that great stuff if you enjoy it. And stay tuned for our next Collecting 101 video. I kind of want to stay in the glass. I'm really starting to get into this glass stuff a little more. We're going to go to the creme de la creme, or however you want to say it, Tiffany glass. We're going to run into Tiffany glass. This stuff is just gorgeous. This stuff's up there, probably beyond Murano on the, you know, the, uh, the expensive side of glass. So we're going to hop into Tiffany glass in our next Collecting 101 video. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. And you know me when I talk about collecting, it's always about your memories over money. See you guys later.